Hello, and welcome to Call Quality Dashboard Basics. My name is Rudy Peterson, and I am a member of the Skype for Business Customer Lifecycle Services team. Our goal is to enhance the customer and partner experience by capturing feedback to influence product direction while enabling organizations of any size to access our cloud services by providing best-in-class readiness and deployment services. This session is part of the wider Skype Operations Framework training, and we encourage you to review all of the recorded Skype Operations Framework training sessions. Before we get started, I wanted to say a little bit about why the Skype Operations Framework was created and its focus. The shift to the cloud changes the way that Skype for Business is delivered, moving from on-premise deployments to online deliveries. With this in mind, we have been asked to provide practical guidance to assist with planning, delivering, and operating Skype for Business online. For this reason, we created the multifaceted approach of the Skype operational framework, which provides practical guidance associated tools and assets, along with a common language of phrases to help drive a common understanding of the Skype for Business online lifecycle. To help share this information, we have the Skype Academy, which hosts sessions like this one, as well as technical product training and feedback mechanisms. The Skype Operations Framework is a living framework for which updates are being made on a regular basis. We encourage you to check back every so often for the latest materials. As the Skype Operations Framework is a living framework which includes Skype for Business Online, you can expect to find new content available on a consistent basis. The information that you find may be focused on updates for previously delivered assets, or it may be introducing new features and training material. We encourage you to always be working with the latest assets, some of which may have been updated and released since this overview session was created. This video series was created specifically to introduce and provide information about the Call Quality Dashboard, which is made available to all Skype for Business online deliveries. The previous video in this series introduced you to the Call Quality Dashboard, and this video will build upon that information to explain the basic terms and concepts of the information available in the Call Quality Dashboard. The concepts that we will be discussing in this video will allow you to understand the quality of the calls that are utilizing your Skype for Business delivery. Once an understanding of the basics has been achieved, it will be possible to start modifying and creating your own reports. This will be the gateway for investigation of issues and evaluation of the environment's health. First, let's discuss the definition and differences between a call and a stream. A stream is the term used to reference the media that travels in one direction from one endpoint to another endpoint. Because a stream is only one direction, there must be at least one more stream for an endpoint to have two-way communication, and thus a total of two streams are required minimum per endpoint for communication. A call is the term used to reference all streams from all endpoints that are part of a communication. For example, a call with two participants may contain two streams for each participant for a total of four streams, but they are all considered part of one call. Streams do not just exist for audio communication. Streams also carry other types of media, such as video and screen sharing. In order to focus this session, though, we will keep our attention on streams with audio. 
Next, let us take a look at stream quality. At the end of each call, and under some circumstances during a call, metrics pertaining to the quality of streams are reported from endpoints. It is the data in this report that is used to determine the stream quality classification. The reports for streams include five metrics, which are used to grade the quality of the stream. The five metrics are packet loss rate, round trip time, jitter, degradation average, and report concealed average. If any one of the five metrics exceeds the threshold set for that metric, then the stream will be classified as poor. The reverse is also true in that if all of the five metrics are below the threshold set for the metric, then the stream will be classified as good. Under some conditions, it is possible that the metrics for a stream are not reported, missing from the report, or the call was too short for the metrics to be recorded. For streams which this is true, an unclassified rating is assigned. The last metric that we will discuss on this slide is the poor stream percentage. This is a calculated value based on the count of good and poor streams. It is a percentage that can be used to determine a trend over time for stream quality and is thus a valuable metric particularly for reports with graphing. Let's take a look at the information that I just described in an actual report. The report that I am showing you here is a standard report that you will find in the detailed report section of CQD. Here we can see the count of calls which had good, poor, and unclassified quality ratings for the last several months. If you would like to see the detailed counts for a month, you can hover over that month's information for specifics. You may want to note that poor call percentage is showing the trend for poor calls month to month. Finally, I need to bring to your attention the fact that I am making this recording at the beginning of the month. This is the reason why the data available for the month of December is less than that of the previous months. Next, I would like to introduce network classification and how it pertains to CQD. In the first video of this series, there was an introduction to the process used for uploading subnet information pertaining to a company's corporate network. It is this information that allows for the origin of a stream to be marked. This is important to CQD because later, when viewing reports, it will be used for filtering and grouping streams by one of three network classifications, managed, unmanaged, or other. A stream that is known to have originated on a corporate network based on the subnet information that was uploaded will be marked as managed. Streams that originate on a managed network are expected to be within the control of the network administrator and therefore tend to have a higher overall quality rating. A stream that is unmanaged would be one that originates from a wireless network, public network, home network, or a network that is not included in the uploaded subnet information. Because traffic from this type of network is considered to be outside of the control of a network administrator, the quality is expected to be generally lower than that of a managed network. Finally, we come to the other classification. This is what a stream is marked when the network origin cannot be determined due to missing information.
Let's take a look at another report and see how network classification has been used to separate network groups. Here again we see the All Audio Streams report found in the Detailed Reports section of CQD. Please note that the title of the report is blue. This is an indicator that there are subreports available. If we click on the report title, we are taken to two new reports. The first report on the left is showing us quality information for streams that were identified to have used a managed network. The second report on the right is showing us quality information for streams that were identified to have used an unmanaged network. As before, the quality information for good, poor, and unclassified is available along with the poor percentage. It is interesting to note that even though the stream count totals between the managed and unmanaged reports are different, you can still use the poor percentage to see that the managed streams were overall of higher quality than the streams on the unmanaged network. Next, I would like to share with you some information about endpoints and pairs. An endpoint is a classification for the origin type or destination type that was involved in the stream. An endpoint can have either a classification of server or client. The purpose for this classification is that when we are working with reports later and want to drill into the details, the server or client classification can be used as a filter. Pairs are another important classification for which there are two possible values, first and second. Pairs work with endpoint classifications and can be used to filter data in order to understand impact on quality. An endpoint of type server will always be listed as first if it is one of the endpoints in the stream. An endpoint of type client will always be listed as a second if it is one of the endpoints in the stream. The vast majority of pairs have a first of server and a second of client, but there are three possible combinations that you will see. The possible combinations are server, 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 client, or client, client. Again, the reason for pairs and endpoints is to provide a structure for the stream communication, which you can then exploit when using the call quality dashboard to perform in depth discovery for reports and investigations. Let's take a look at another report and see how endpoint classification in conjunction with pairs have been used to create some focused reports. Here again we see the reports for managed versus unmanaged audio streams. Once again we can see that the title of the managed report is blue, indicating there are subreports available if we click on the report title. The first report on the left is showing us quality information for streams that were identified between server and client endpoints, which were connected to the network using a wired connection and identified as being a managed network. The second report on the right is showing us quality information for streams that were identified between client and client endpoints, which were connected to the network using a wired connection and identified as being on a managed network. As before, the call quality information for good, poor, and unclassified is available along with the poor percentage. My goal for this presentation was to introduce common terms and definitions 
that are used in the call quality dashboard. With this new knowledge, my hope is that exploring the call quality dashboard and understanding the wealth of information available will assist you with any investigations or assessments. I encourage you to use the information shared and continue with the next video in this series, which will discuss the creation and modification of reports. The Skype Operations Framework is a living framework that we continue to expand with new offers as well as making updates to existing assets. A key driver for those updates and changes are your suggestions and feedback. If you can take a few moments and visit the feedback site noted here, or use the link on the main site to access the feedback channels, we would appreciate your thoughts and ideas. When you do visit the feedback channels, you will find that voting has been enabled so that it is possible to show support for comments and feedback previously submitted by others. Voting is an excellent way to show your support for feedback or ideas previously shared. As part of the multifaceted approach to the Skype operational framework, we have also created a community where the team responsible for the framework is looking forward to hearing from you regarding how you are applying framework guidance to your projects, as well as sharing lessons learned. We invite you to sign up and take part in the community today. To stay up to date on what is happening regarding the Skype operational framework, please visit the resources listed here.